Hello, hello. Um, I've come to, well I'm not really sure, not really sure what we're going to do today, um, except I posted this on Instagram and said I would explain how I got this if it focuses. I'm not sure if it's going to. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to do this and I've got quite a lot of information to share with you today. Um, first of all, uh, an alternative for tea bag paper, which you might be interested in. It's easier to get hold of. Uh, it's relatively cheap, actually. It is very cheap. You'll all be able to get hold of it, and I cannot tell you where. You, you will have to kind of search your local area, but once I tell you what it is, you'll be able to hopefully source it. Um, so, how I did this... Um, was using tea bag paper and I printed onto it and I've also printed onto the alternative so I've not this was the first time I've printed onto the alternative paper and I'm not sure how it's gonna how it's gonna work so we're gonna kind of learn that together <laughs> um, so to print onto the tea bag paper which you can get from Art Van Gogh, and it's Go as in G-O, not as in Van Gogh the artist. So um, that's for the UK. I'm sure they ship internationally. So um, please do check it out. What I did was I took a piece of plain copy of paper and um, I used sellotape. Now, it's probably a good idea to iron your tea bag paper lightly first. And what I would do is I'd lay the tea bag paper down, pop the printer paper down, and then iron the back. Um, sellotape it, making sure you cover all of the edges. And I would pop a book on top of the tea bag paper to hold it as flat as possible. Now, I'm lucky enough, I've got two printers one that I use for like best. One's me going out printer and the other one is just, um, it's an old printer that I use for kind of this stuff, putting um, unusual papers and trying things out on. So I, I'd be happy for popping this through my printer but you might not want to so you probably do want to make sure yours is much flatter than this. What you have to make sure is all of the edges are stuck and there is absolutely no sellotape sticking over the edge before you put it through your printer. Now I tried this by just sellotaping the edge and feeding it through. I sellotaped the top and bottom and fed it through and it just does not work. So you really do need to tape all of the edges. So that's my top tip. Um, what I would then do is I'd choose my image or um, I've kind of put a compilation together in, um, in Photoshop to print. Um, and I reduced it by 80% so I you know I was going to keep a f as far away from the sellotape as I can and just print in the printable area um, that's the tea bag paper and it worked brilliantly this is the kind of thing you might get if you put this through your printer um, it's because I didn't iron this one the first ones I did I ironed but the second ones I was a bit lazy and just thought eh that'll be all right um, and as you can see it wasn't as good as the first one but m the images are actually fine they're going to be um, completely usable so this is printing onto tea bag paper and as you can see the colours are actually quite vibrant at the moment but they do look different once you take them off the copy of paper this is the first time I've done this this is the alternative paper now it comes in rolls like this. I'm going to just stand so I can see the screen, make sure you can see this. And can you see it's kind of fibrous? This is paper. It's a florist paper and it's called spider's web paper. Spider's web florist paper. That's what you need to search for. And you can get this in every colour under the sun. Now I've bought um, three colours at the moment, definitely going to be getting more of this one because I think this is the one I'm probably going to be using an awful lot. Um, the current journal I'm working on, I've used this as, the, as book pages. 
um, you can stamp on it because I've already done it and clearly you can print on it. Now in terms of the difference between tea bag paper and the spiderweb paper, um, the spiderweb paper is a bit more textured mm. and it's also um, thicker. It is a slightly thicker paper so it's kind of quite durable but you can also do quite a lot with it. And as you can see, this is very white, and this is this one is a is an off white. It's a kind of creamy colour, so there is a difference, and it's not as sharp as you can see to print onto. So just do I'm back. <laughs> um, so to get this off, um, I simply I, I, I don't worry about trying to get the sort of tape um, peeling it off. I literally just cut around the line of the sellotape. tape. So, oh, the other thing is a bit of a tip, really. Um, if you've got if you've got a question, I will absolutely answer you on YouTube without a doubt. I will answer your question, um, but you you know you might have to wait. But what I would suggest is if you have a look through the comments, previous comments, the chances are I've already answered it. Um, I think I probably I don't know maybe twenty people. Um, I told where to get the tea bag paper from so you know some of you might have had to wait for a reply when I'd already answered you know further down in the comments so just just for speed <laughs> you might want to just check um, whether someone else has asked the question because you know I do try and give you all the information I can in the video um, and I was kind of telling people to go and watch Michelle because you know, Michelle had said where you could get this paper from in the UK so, um, you know, I was kind of trying to steer people towards Michelle because this was, this, you know, her using this paper um, was what got this started. So can you see, you get the print onto the paper. Oh, that looks awesome. Look at that. Ooh. I, we can use that. Maybe, maybe not today, but that is beautiful. And that's obviously the ink that's come... Look at that one. So you can see the images are kind of um, a little bit muted because a lot of the ink goes through onto the copier paper. Might be worth using a better quality paper than copier paper so you can actually use that. So we can see we've still got a much brighter image on the tea bag paper. I'm going to try and show you um, the difference. They're both, this is actually more see-through. It's more kind of transparent. Um, and I've made a window envelope using this paper. It looks amazing. I'm not going to show you because it's for my journal. So, this is what you get. And this is the tea bag paper. I think it looks amazing printing onto these papers. Um, it's not going to smudge or anything. It's all kind of dry. It, you know, I printed this really early this morning. So, um, we're going to have a little go at one of the envelopes first, I suppose. So this is just an envelope that I have, um, you know, dunked it in tea, tea stained, tea stained this one. We're going to start um, to recreate the envelope that I had on Pinterest. And um, to do that, I'm just, I'm just going to open this up because it's a bit easier to work with. Um, I would really like to use a butterfly on this. Um, I've got a couple of other things that I'd like to do. Um, might might keep filming because it's just some stuff I want to get done. But I've got another idea that we're going to try out in this video. This tears quite easily. This this tears, you know, really really well. So I'm just going to tear around this butterfly. And I don't need to be too perfect, but obviously I don't want to tear off any of the image. Dun, dun. What was I saying? Was I saying anything important? Um, uh, yeah, try to... Um, I will put the name of this paper, uh, the alternative, in the description box. And like I said, I did a search yesterday. Um, I just literally put in um, spider's web paper. Spider, spiders, no, I put in florist, 
spider's web paper and I got loads, absolutely hundreds, and they weren't all the UK, um, there was the USA everywhere. So um, you'll definitely be able to get hold of this locally um, or, or you know, have somebody, somewhere you can get this online quite easily. So we're going to have, um, I'm just going to decide where I'm putting the butterfly first of all. While I'm thinking about that, I'm just going to, I'm using matte medium. Mod Podge works just as well, um, or any probably PVA, if you give it a little bit of a water down, um, would work exactly the same. So I, th I don't know, what should we do? do, do, do. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put it bottom right. As always, um, I'm not putting any other colour onto this because we've obviously got our coloured ink so I am gonna ink the edges of this um, and where we've torn the edge and now where we're inking the edge it kind of feathers that tea bag paper gives it a feathery effect so we might not finish this project we might just um, you know this is just a, well it's probably not even a tutorial it's a bit more of a show and tell craft craft along with me right Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the edge of this envelope because I'm actually going to um, I'm going to put matte medium over the whole surface of the envelope. Now if you try and put ink over matte medium, you don't. It doesn't actually take particularly well because it gives you that um, that shiny surface. It's like a, a sealant. Um, so the ink doesn't work quite as well. So I'm going to do the inking I want to do first. Now again, matte medium is a wet based um, product and it will, um, this will bleed, it will run and I will go over this with ink over the matte medium but it will not have this kind of same effect. Um, yeah, I kind of know what I'm trying to say but just maybe not saying it particularly well um, but it's still early it's what like uh, five to nine five to nine in the morning I'm doing this early because I have to work today <laughs> two more Thursdays two more Thursdays and then I won't have to work on a Thursday anymore so that's my inked envelope probably should let this dry a little bit before I go mac medium it but put a mac Mod Podge or Matte Medium or whatever you're using on, um, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it on now. It will run. Gives it a bit more of a vintage look as well, and it does give it a really nice kind of crinkly, you know, that lovely crinkly feeling that we all love. And pop that there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over the edge, and I'm brushing outwards because um, when I bring this up to the camera, you'll see why. You do get this absolutely beautiful, it looks like kind of ink splat. Okay, so this, if we will focus, that's the effect you get. And it actually, you can't get all of the detail, but where it brushes out very delicately, it just looks like, it kind of looks like watercolour running. It's beautiful. And um, obviously we've got a bit of a shiny effect on our, our envelope. So obviously I'll leave that to dry before I work on that anymore. So I'm going to pop that over there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try another envelope, but with the, um, with the spiderweb paper. Now I don't know whether to use the same image or a different image this time. Um, hmm. um, now this is, like I said, this is slightly thicker. So before I start trying to tear this, which I haven't done yet, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the um, elements out. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, I have to make some pockets. Um, this was just a bigger envelope that I glued down, cut in half. 
I don't know if any of you have ever seen these envelopes from AliExpress. Um, I, I, I saw them and they had stags on and I thought they were beautiful, so I ordered them. But they had a really, which I didn't think was a particularly pleasant phrase. It says, don't let it get you down. It will be, it will be over with soon. I thought that sounded a bit morbid, so um, I've not used any of the envelopes. Um, I'm turning these ones into pockets. So um, what I would like to do is use maybe that. No, I still want to use that butterfly. Yeah, I'm going to use that big brown butterfly, and I'm also going to I'm going to use some of this. And now this is awful, isn't it? Because I have absolutely no idea which way up this goes. Oh, I'm so sorry if anybody can read this, and I'm just mushing it absolutely oh it doesn't tear too badly it's actually very strong this paper very strong. I'm going to sit back down <laughs> it's very strong it does tear but it doesn't tear anywhere near as easily as that as that tea bag paper so that's just a little tip but that's good um, because like I said I've used this as a win in a windowed envelope um, and it looks fantastic, well I like it anyway and um, it's, it is very strong, cool, that's good so I'm just going to tear a little bit of this oriental text out I have no idea what language it is, whether it is Chinese or Japanese um, the images that I'm using for this journal, uh, this project, some of them, um, a lot of them, come from kits. Um, I've got a fantastic kit. These images come from a kit from Calico College. Collage? Calico Collage? Yeah, Calico Collage. And um, not these ones, actually. These come from another kit. Um, I love them. But I don't want to use straight kit images, um, so I'm trying to make sure... I kind of play with everything and alter it slightly because I don't, um, I'm not going to use the pages as pages, I'm using elements of pages and I'm using elements of the ephemera and you know just trying to not use a straight kit for this for this project but because of the theme it's not something I had loads of book pages for or images already um, that I could I could use so I you know that's why I, I went and found um, some images that I could use but they had a lot of kind of possibilities to change and alter which is nice when you when you find a kit that you can do that with okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do exactly the same as I did with the tea bag paper and I'm gonna oh little bit of oh yeah that's something else I wanted to tell you um this stuff here these fibers um it's a fantastic uh yarn called banana yarn and you can use it as a straight I don't want but yeah you can use it as a straight piece you can I mean it's supposed to be for like crocheting and things like that but it pulls apart really well so you can use the fibers um and I've bought a few colors but that really bright multicolor one it's just lovely so if you want to and you know one roll if you're if you're tearing it up to use the fibers and I got that from um, yarn yarn and if you find yarn yarn on eBay I would absolutely recommend you go directly to their shop now this has just been um, this is uh, just a coat of gesso with some acrylic paint into it and there's nothing um, you know special about this it is just gesso with some acrylic paint mixed mixed in to get rid of that stag and to give it a bit of a give it a bit of a background color actually going to a bit of that um, I actually used copper in this but it, it went quite pink but I quite like that because it goes with the colours of the 
of the project and the, the images that I'm using, so that's quite nice. Okay, so before I stick, I really need to work out whether I'm going to use this as a... I've got two, so I'm going to be... I won't obviously bore you with both of them today, but um, I will be making both, I just might not be... Hmm. Yeah, I think I like it. I think I like it that way. What else have I got? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm feeling a little bit indecisive. <laughs> Do you do this? Do you just like go over things when you think, just do it, just get it done? Um, I don't know. I think I like that better. I don't know. Do I? I think I like both actually. I think I like this. So maybe, maybe, maybe I should have those together. And have that. No. Right, okay. Again, I'm going to give this a coat all over. Um, hopefully, this will be dry because this is something I'd like to probably, you know, finish in the video. Um, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Will we get the same effect? This is going to be. This is where we're learning something together. Yep, we do. That's good. That move in here. This is very dark. It's a lot darker than the... I am going to do something to lighten this up there, I think, once it's dry. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up to the camera so you can see if it will focus. You do get a similar effect with this paper as you do with the tea bag paper. Again, it's not as easy to see, but it is brushing out. It's probably easy to see on there. Can you see? So it gives it a really nice kind of texture and feel. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink this. I'm not gonna use matte medium to hold this down. I'm gonna use some Fabri-Tac, good old Fabri-Tac. And again, I have no idea which way up this is supposed to go, so I'm really sorry if I'm... Well, then again, you know, when we use book pages, we use them in all directions, don't we? So, I apologise to anyone who can understand the writing if I'm sticking this upside down. So that's number two we're going to dry and that will obviously be um, a pocket in one of the projects that I'm doing. And third, this is, um, uh, oh that's the, that's the thingy end. This is a piece of canvas so I'm going to see if um, I did the canvas tags and I used um, tissue paper. So I'm gonna actually do this with the tea bag paper because I want to turn these into some tags and they will be cut and then stitched onto some cardstock. Um, and that's why I've printed these images because I actually want to use these. The only thing I haven't decided is whether I'm going to tear or whether I'm going to um, cut them straight but what I do want to do is I want a background 
on this. I don't want this um, completely plain and this might go horribly wrong because this stamp um, might not look exactly on the fabric as it looks on paper. Um, so I'm using my archival ink. Actually what I'm going to do first very quickly is I'm just going to ink this canvas. I feel a bit here, there and everywhere today. This is quite, this is how this is how I work. So I kind of um, apologise <laughs> if you don't actually, if you're not able to follow. Right, so I'm probably going to do two. So I'm going to half that there. That's cool. I'm happy with that. And I got this stamp from the lovely Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne, for sending me this. Yep, like that. Happy with that. Okay, so let's go back to our image. So now it's a case of do I tear it or do I cut it so it's square? And um, the stitching is going to be very straight, so I think I'm going to tear it. And hopefully I can tear it fairly accurately. This is the tea bag paper, um, but I think the spider web, web paper will work exactly the same exactly the same way. So I'm going to quickly tear, when I say quickly tear, I mean slowly tear <laughs> as accurately as I can while I'm in front of you all. Um, this is quite nice actually because once the children have left for school and my other half's gone to work, um, I'm kind of just crafting as much as I can before I have to go. Um, and I usually talk to myself anyway, so this is like, you know, it's the same old really. It's just like every morning. <laughs> okay. Now this is not absolutely perfect, but that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna I'm not too worried about this because this is not the the perfect size. This is gonna be trimmed down just to make sure all of those edges are darker there we go oh, did I do the so I want that in the middle and Right way up. Oh. Which way up does this go? Was it that way or was it that way? Oh my days. Um, I should have used the other one. I think it's that way, isn't it? Ah! Oh. Yeah, it's this way. Oh. What am I doing? Right, I need a little bit more matte medium. I only pour out a little bit of matte medium at a time. I don't pour out, every, you know, tons. So I'm going to just whack this down the middle. Now the fabric soaks it up, obviously, um, but we shouldn't need too much because this is um, very, very thin. Very thin. Get that into the middle. And again, brush that out. Oh, it looks nice. So hopefully that will look just as good when it dries because it does look nice. And as you can see, the matte medium kind of blends the ink that we inked the... Um, the canvas with so I'm just going to bring that up and that will make a cracking canvas tag so yet another use for tea bag paper 
printing onto it. Um, is there anything else I can or wanted to do while you were here? Um, unfortunately we can't finish these because they're not dry but um, yeah I hope that's given you a few more ideas for teabag paper and also um, an alternative if you're finding it difficult to get hold of. Um, it's very probable that it's going to be cheaper postage to get this um, to get this spider's web paper and I just want to say that I did not buy mine online um, I got mine from my local craft store and hi ladies if you're watching um, you're awesome so uh, yeah that's basically what I wanted to share with you this morning so um, thanks for watching if you have any questions like I said please please do contact me um, but if you are in a hurry just check nobody has asked the same question before because I might I'm not going to necessarily be able to get back to you immediately so I'm going to continue crafting and I will see you all again soon bye